ah, it's just beautiful. Thank you. I just want to just yes. breathe that in. Just want to breathe it in and the testimony and the gratitudes and you know, church doesn't start at the message. Church starts when the first note is played that God is with us. Amen. Amen. All right. So you know, this is a this is an interesting. This has been a really interesting few weeks, hasn't it? <laughs> I was here two weeks ago, and I was I had just uh, received the uh, information uh, that there was a change in who was running for the uh, it, that that uh, President Biden was no longer running. Uh, he dropped out of the race, and went, Woo, look what's happened in the last two weeks. And I was like, wow, things have shifted a lot in the landscape of life. But you know, politics aren't the only thing that's out there. <laughs> There's a lot of other stuff that's going on. And now the whole process, and I'm going to come back to it, but the whole process leading up to two weeks ago, uh, it, it, there were certain things that, it, the, uh, there was a lot of weeds, like real weed weeds in, in, the con- in, our, in our consciousness. Despair and gloom and doom and all that type of stuff and sadness, you know, kind of like, was like this, you know, kind of, kind of like a air pollution, kind of hanging, hanging low and we just kept breathing it in. And then something happened, and I'll talk about that a phenomenon, I think. But this is also a time of the year. Uh, this last week on Thursday, some of you may or may not know this, but there, there was a, a, a holy day holy day in the Christian church called Lamas Day, which, of course, don't be shocked, it was stolen from an ancient Celtic religion. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> called Lunasa, and that particular, it's, basically this is the time of harvest, it's, it's, this is known as the, um, the, the first, the time of first fruits, <laughs> how appropriate, and the first, the time of the first harvest. You'll see on our communion table we have uh, something a little bit different today, and it shows the loaf of bread in, indicating the first harvest, bringing the best to, uh, to the table. But one of the things uh, that it doesn't matter what our faith is, whether it's Christian or Jewish, agnostic, pagan, um, Buddhist, there's something that we all share, and that's earth, right? And something else that we share, and that's the cycles of life that the earth teaches us about, amen? Amen. And if we look at, our, at, at Christian scripture, so many of Jesus' teachings were actually rooted in agrarian society. We hear today in our scripture passage about the mustard seed and about yeast. And, and there's another reference to the mustard seed. You know, if anybody has the faith of a mustard seed, right? You can move mountains, yeah. right? Do you believe it? Yeah. Yeah. How big's a mustard seed? It must be this big. It must be like a coconut. Super small. But it's like a pinhead. Think about the pinhead. That's the size of a mustard seed. Right? So Jesus used a lot of teachings from Mother Earth herself. And this, the, this holiday, Lunasa, I thought this was also really kind of funny uh, because I didn't know this until I did a little, you know, me being the nerd that I am, like, oh, let's learn more. Did you know that in, uh, in, in ancient Ireland that this, the feast day of Lunasa wasn't just a one-off thing? There was two weeks prior to it, in essence, the last couple weeks of July, something would happen. And what would happen is that peoples from all around, all the other, uh, other tribes, if you will, or nations would come together and they would have a sporting fest. They, they competed in different types of sports and they feasted and they just had a good old time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I thought about it, I thought, how appropriate. What was, what's happening now, the last two weeks of July? The Olympics, people coming from all over the world, gathering together to go ahead and, and, and not just compete, but to, to see the fruits of their labor, if you will, the fruits of their practice. Amen? Amen. I think it's pretty cool. You know, and then that festival would end in, in a big banquet. It was a festival, a, a Bacchus festival. <laughs> The uh, god of wine and merriment. 
Yes, the same wine and merriment Greek god that led to, I'm calling it, the fresco fiasco <laughs> <laughs> that started off the Olympics. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google that one and you'll find out. <laughs> but, you know, the earth and planting, it, it, cycles of earth remind us that in very simple ways, unencumbered by social media or politics or consumerism. There are cycles in our lives. We are reminded to till the soil. We are asked to plant seeds. And I ask us, what seeds have you planted in your life over the last year or years? We fertilize those seeds with the shift of life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we water those seeds with our tears. And then it is time for the harvest. It's time for the harvest. And the question that I ask us is, what have we grown? What is growing in your life? What has grown in your life? What is it that you are harvesting? We're reminded that the sun, the days become shorter, because now the days will become, start to become shorter, which will lead us into a time in October in the pagan communities known as Samhain, which is the thinning of the veil, if you will, between life and death. We know it as Sugar High Holy Day, <laughs> Halloween, <laughs> diabetic, diabetic death. <laughs> but it's a time when we are, the earth reminds us that it will then begin all over again, right? These, and I want to caveat, these are all things that happen in the northern hemisphere at this time. Things are the opposite in the southern hemisphere because when we are celebrating Christmas and thinking about snow and Santa <laughs> in Australia, they are sun tanning on the beach because it's their summertime. So think all of these things but in reverse for there. Our sacred reading today talked about the mustard seed and about what we were doing with it and also about yeast. And I've been grappling, I'm just going to be honest, I've been grappling with, with, with what to share today because no, no, I don't want to, this is not, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to say this, this is not a political statement I'm about to make, okay? I'm just telling you. But a shift that's happened in the last couple weeks as I said, there's been this air of depression and anxiety. Yes. I've heard it from a lot of people. They wouldn't even turn the news on. You know, my, my, my beloved is as much of a news junkie as I am, and she wouldn't turn the news on for a month. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I wanted to know what was happening. And so I felt like I was sneaking and <laughs> turning the TV on by watching the news of what was happening. That's how depressing the conversation, the, 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 the um, societal conversation had become. But in all of this, I know that in, in our teachings and in, just in life in general, one of the things that I've kept saying is, is we've got to keep hope. We've got to keep hope. We got to find hope in here somewhere, right? And that doesn't matter if it's a political thing that's going on or a personal thing. I know, I mean, you, you, you know, being a pastor, you get to hear all about my life. You know, I mean, I've had my trials, <laughs> I've had my crucifixions. But the one thing I know and I believe in because of my faith is that there's a resurrection. There's always a resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Just like in the, if you follow a, 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 a pagan tradition and it's all about the earth, you get that, right? The life, the death, the rebirth again. Well, in, in, our, in the faith, the Jesus faith, if you will, it reminds us that there's a life and a death and a resurrection. 
And it's that personal knowledge of the resurrections that have happened in my life that have given me hope when I go through the trials. Amen? Have, have any of us gone through trials in life? <laughs> any of us in a trial right now? Right? And we've heard it in our testimonies over and over again that the thing that's made people get through their trials in life is holding on to a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope. Mustard seed. Teeny, eeny, weeny, bitty piece of hope. And when we don't feel it, and when we don't see it, that's why we can turn to one another and borrow some from each other. Amen? Because there's times when I have not been feeling it. Just saying. And there's people that I know that I can go through. It's like, can I, instead of saying, can I borrow a cup of sugar, can I borrow some hope? Right? Can I borrow some hope? Yes. Can I borrow some hope because I need it right now? So some of you right now might, not, might need to borrow hope today. Yes. All right? I got a lot to lend. Yes. Right? I got a lot to lend. Yes. Because I have refused to give up. That's the other thing. I'm way too spiritually stubborn to give up. Amen? Yeah. Amen? I am way too spiritually stubborn. Nobody can take my joy. Nobody can take my joy. You can try, but you ain't it. You are not taking it. Right? And we've seen a wave of, and I'm just caveat, I don't know what's going to happen in the election. I have no clue. I have no clue. But for a period of time at this moment, there is a sigh of relief and there is hope. There is hope for some people. For others, it's not. But for some, there is. But I watch this, for those of you who don't know, my background before the ministry was sociology. So I always see things, see things through sociological and groups, how th groups interact and, and things happen. And it's a wave. I just feel a wave, right? It's a wave. It's wow. It's like, wow. Now, I feel, I have felt, and I will continue to feel. And I want you to use that as a metaphor and bring it back to your own personal life. Bring it back to your own personal life. Because whether you're in it, you have been in it, there's going to be a wave of hope in your life. When you feel downtrodden, when your health isn't good, when you can't see, you can't feel, maybe it's emotional, there's going to be hope and it's going to be a wave. I feel, and I've been talking to folks for years, I feel that one of those waves is going to come from us. Right? I really feel that. I have felt that and I will continue to feel that. Even if it's a ripple. Even if it's a ripple, those of you who can hear my voice, whether it's in here or beyond around the world, there is a ripple of hope that you have been planting, that God has planted in you that's going to take root and is going to blow about the world. Do you believe it? Yeah. I do. Now, it might not be life-changing. It might not be earth-shattering for the whole, the whole world. Probably not. But I bet you anything, it'll change yours. It'll change yours. Our scripture talks about Jesus talking about the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. And don't you just wish that Jesus would just be clear sometimes? Have you ever, right? Have you ever gone to somebody and you're like, can you please give me the answer? And then they tell you a story. <laughs> I want a story. I want the answer. <laughs> right? And Jesus being Jesus gives us a story. In fact, gives us a couple stories when talking about and giving the answer of what is the kingdom of God like? What is the realm of heaven like? And he talks, these are just two of the many uh, parables that he says in a row. And as we take all of the stories that he talks about and we kind of distill them down together, different people have come up with different things. I want to share with you, this is from um, Deacon Tom's reflection this week. He says that God's reign is about union, communion, mercy, forgiveness, Nonviolence, 
Letting go. Solidarity. Service. Lives of love. Patience. Oh, please, not that one. <laughs> Simplicity. Compassion, I add to that, and healing. God's reign has also been called a community of creation by Randy Woodley. Brian McLaren calls the reign of God a network of God, a web of love, divine ecosystem. From Neil Douglas Klotz, from an Aramaic scholar, refers to the reign of God as province of the universe, the design of the universe, the ruling principle of the cosmos, the creative birth and fire of consciousness, the reign of unity. And I would also add to that, Neil uh, Douglas Klotz also refers to it as the great I can. The great I can. Because we all have the seed of God planted within us, just like that mustard seed. And when we believe that the reign of God lives in each and every one of us, we can tap into the great I can, the great potential of possibility that lives in each of us. Amen? A great possibility that lives within each and every one of us. Which then brings me back to my obsession this last week, the Olympics. Because for me, the Olympics, I, you know, I, I was a jock in my younger days. <laughs> You'd never know it, but I was. <laughs> I was a field hockey goalie. I had no problem with any pent-up emotion. <laughs> yes, she does, right? I remember going to the Olympics in 84 here to watch the women's field hockey. I mean, I was into it. But I don't watch it because I'm like some stellar athlete. I, I watch the Olympics because I want to be inspired. I, I want to cheer on my favorite, and I want to support the forgotten. I sometimes can see myself reflected in the greatness of overcoming. And I love to watch the harvesting of hope. This week, the drama-rama aside, the Olympics have shown us how people planted seeds in their lives in times when the soil was not so fertile. Right? began when, when Celine Dion sang from the Eiffel Tower. I've never really been a Celine Dion fan per se. I mean, she is good and all that. But when I saw her documentary recently, where she is suffering from a disease, an autoimmune disease that is paralyzing her body, she has not sung in four years. And to hear her sing, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I really was. I turned up the volume. My kid's like, will you turn that down, Mom? I'm like, no. Yeah. From Celine Dion singing to the gymnasts who overcame emotional and physical illness and emotional brokenness to go on for the gold and win it. Simone Byron. I want to lift up Simone Biles, who only years ago was called a loser by way too many people because she dared to take care of her mental health. Yep. She, <laughs> she dared to take care of her mental health as much as her physical health. Yeah. And because she had the audacity to do so, she openly, and oh my God, from her interview, primetime interview, saying, yes, I had a session with my therapist this morning before she went out and won the gold, amen? <laughs> what? I think to myself, what a role model to all those little girls and little boys 
who want not only to achieve greatness athletically, but to move mountains to get there. Seeds of hope were planted in her and she nourished them, she nurtured them, she watered them with her tears and look at what she did. Her teammate Suni Lee overcame six months ago, six months ago, didn't know if she'd ever compete again because she woke up one day and it dealt with two different kidney diseases, did what she needed to do and she won a silver. The Brazilian counterpart, and I love this, Rebecca, and I'm sorry, I do not know her last name, Pa? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Overcame uh, not, uh, three different physical ailments to her legs and, has, and got Simone Biles worried. <laughs> I don't want to compete against her. She's real good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can go on in the list. How many of these athletes have shown us what it is like to plant seeds in our lives when it's the worst and kept watering them? I liken it to in those trials of my life that I can plant those seeds from God and that, that with, all, with each other's love, water them, nurture them with prayer, my spiritual disciplines to be able to continue to reap the harvest. Amen? Amen. This is the message that we are given today in the scripture and popular media and popular time. I just want to do a, one, two, two more highlights from the scripture. One of it is when he talks about when Jesus gave the, gave the example gave the example that the, that the, the kingdom of heaven was like a mustard seed. Now the mustard seed for some of you who may or may not know is considered by some to be a weed. That's because, honey, if it gets into the soil, it grows. Now I want to remind you, a rose bush can be a weed too. <laughs> Whatever you don't want in your garden is a weed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now in Jesus' time, Many of the, those who work the land, the mustard seed was considered a weed. It's not what they wanted to plant. However, mustard seeds, mustard has healing properties, and it also nourishes the soil. And when I look at it, the kingdom of heaven is like mustard seeds scattered. I think of you and me because I see us scattered throughout the world and planting ourselves here and planting ourselves here and nourishing the ground in which we live and growing and being fabulously colorful to attract the bees and the birds. Highly invasive. <laughs> and we're invasive, right? <laughs> And the other often overlooked part of this also is the woman. That the kingdom of God is like the woman who adds yeast. Now it just says several loaves. But if you look this scripture passage up, how much flour did she add the yeast to? Three measures, it says, in one. Do you know how much three measures are? Look up in the New International Version. She added, I always thought she was just making the bread for her family. She added yeast to 60 pounds of flour. 60 pounds of flour. How much bread, chef, would that make? A lot. <laughs> Village. You can, it sounds to me like she was cooking and baking for that miracle we know as fishes and loaves. Amen? Because she decided to add yeast. Now, remember, when we think about bread for the, for the Jewish people, we think often of matzah, right? Yeast was a contaminant. We actually love it because it makes things nice and light and fluffy, <laughs> right? <laughs> fluffy. 
And she added that to 60 pounds of flour. And she didn't make flatbread. She made a lot, a lot of food that could feed the village. Right? Amen. You were like the yeast <laughs> added, to the, added to the flour of life so that we can feed a village. <laughs> Isn't it exciting? Yeah. To me it is. Okay. I just, I'm a nerd. It's okay. <laughs> so I want to end with this. She's going through multiple pages that she didn't share with you. Aren't you glad? <laughs> you can tell when things excite me. I just write on and on. So in the stories, the many stories I have shared, and when we contemplate about what is the kingdom of God, it all starts with a seed. Whether it's a seed in the ground, whether it's a mustard seed scattered about, whether it's yeast and flour, but for us all, I believe it's the seed of Christ planted in our hearts. Yes. The seed of the divine, yes. the holy one, the cosmos. And as we reflect on our own personal harvest, continue to ask yourself, what seeds are you planting? What seeds have we planted in our life that we've forgotten? What seeds have we planted that have grown into a crop for harvest? What do we have to share? Do we have the 60 pounds of flour to feed a village? What is it that we still need to grow in our garden? And as we release, as our tears water that garden, are we willing to release the grief and receive the comfort? Will we release the weeds of our lives and harvest a bounty? Will we release our grudges and feel the blessings of reconciliation? Will we release our despair? And are you ready to harvest hope? Amen? Amen. Amen.